Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Activity 1.6 Bug Blasters. Here we're going to go ahead and find some missing code or flaws in our program and learn how to correct and debug the situation. So here we're going to look at what we call programming with persistence. So have you ever heard of an art project that needed many revisions to get it to look the way you wanted it to look? Or have you ever had to change a project over and over again to get it to look and function the way you want it to? Creating an artifact takes patience and persistence. You have to fix and rework flaws, which takes time and effort. But once fixed, it leaves you with a wonderful sense of accomplishment. Writing code requires a similar workflow. A program almost never behaves exactly the way you want it to on your first try. Programmers find that bugs or errors in their code all the time. They work hard to correct the bugs and ensure their programs function as desired. The process of fixing bugs in a program is referred to as debugging. This activity will introduce you to some of the ways you can debug your programs in App Inventor. These skills are very valuable and will give you more confidence as you work on more complex projects in this unit. We use a specific set of steps for debugging our code when creating our apps. The following list is the debugging steps for your reference. You will walk through each of these steps in this activity. Step one has you checking your hardware or emulator connection issues. You might need to close the emulator or the MIT AI companion app or reset the connection and reconnect. Step two, check for compilation errors. These are warning or error messages that you would find in your block viewer. You will then need to fix those. Step three, make sure you understand the intended outcomes of each event handler, review your comments and algorithms. Step four, make sure your code is easy to read, collapse code that is not related to the bug. Step five, use debugging strategies to isolate the bug. The do it command, disable command, or code trace or variable trace your program. Step six, test the app. Step seven, fix the bug. And then step eight, test the app again. You're now ready to go ahead and blast those bugs. So it's time for you to do some debugging. Download and import the A16 studybuddyfixme.aia file into your App Inventor account. You can find this file at the bottom of the assignment. Go ahead and deploy the app to your physical device. Now let's take a look at what the Study Buddy app description tells us is supposed to happen with our app. The main functionality of the Study Buddy app is to allow the user to write and color on an image. It's a fun way to complete worksheets and label images. Currently, the app has a picture of a cell and its organelles. The user can color and label the cell with their fingertip, which is the canvas one dragged event handler. Two, it can draw a filled in circle or a dot by tapping on the canvas, triggering the canvas one touched event handler. Note that the circle drawn on the canvas must be filled in with the color that you chose. Adjust the size of the circle drawn using the slider component. Choose the color they like, yellow, blue, or green, using the buttons provided. Clear the canvas, and then go ahead and take a picture using the device's camera and replace the current background image with the cell with a new picture. Now, once we have gone into that app, we're going to need to take a few minutes to read the comments to better understand each event handler's purpose. We will do this through the block view of our app in MIT App Inventor. As you go ahead and fix those bugs, be sure to go ahead and test them on your AI Companion app. Once you are done fixing all of your bugs, go ahead and submit that to the attached Google slide found under My Documents. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our program does and how we can identify and fix some of those bugs. Now that we're ready to go ahead and start working in MIT App Inventor, we're going to need to go to the bottom of our Schoology page and find the attachment section. Here you'll see the A16 study buddy fix me.aia file. We're going to need to go ahead and click on download. And once you download that, that's going to put that into your files manager. And the next step is to go over to MIT App Inventor. And from here, we're going to go ahead to my projects and we're going to go ahead and import this project into my computer. Go ahead and select choose file. And from here, right under your recent tab, you should be able to find that AI6 study buddy fix me.aia file. Go ahead and click on that, select open, and then go ahead and click OK. That will go ahead and import that AIA file into your MIT App Inventor account. 
Now, once that file go ahead and loads, it should pop up on your screen and then we should be ready to go ahead and start testing our app. Here you can see that we have our designer view. And if we go ahead and jump over to our block view, you can see that we have a bunch of code and we're gonna notice that there's some blocks kind of laying around the canvas here. We have some warnings down here, things that we're gonna need to address. So I'm gonna go back over to my designer view. And the next step is to let's go ahead and take a look at our MIT app companion. So what we're gonna need to do here is go ahead and hit connect. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and select Chromebook. Now, once your app companion loads, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and resize your screen so that we can see both the MIT app inventor as well as the app companion. Now, before we go ahead and start to look at what the code is doing, let's go ahead and test our app. So you can see that we have this picture of our cell organelles here. And basically what we should be able to do is just draw on this app. So we're gonna go ahead and test our app. Let's click on the yellow button. And if I draw a line by left clicking or using my finger on a tablet, we should see a straight yellow line or it should follow my finger. Here, if I left click and drag down, you can see I get a little bit of a squiggly line and it's obviously not yellow. So we do have an issue with that yellow button. Let's check our blue. We draw a vertical line. Well, we're getting a red line. And again, that's kind of all over the place. Red isn't even one of our color options here. So we need to go back and fix that. And I have a feeling if we click on green, probably the same thing is gonna happen. We get the yellow. So we have three bugs right there where just the colors aren't working. The next thing, let's go ahead and clear our screen. And you're gonna notice that if I click clear button, nothing is actually happening. So right off the bat, we have four quick bugs that we can see. If we take our take picture button, we should be able to access our camera on our tablet or our Chromebook and take a picture and use that to draw. If I click the take picture button, obviously nothing is actually happening. So we're gonna need to go ahead and modify that a little bit as well. Now, one of the other things we do have is this dot size. And this is the only thing we're gonna actually go ahead and change on the user interface. And we can do that by going and clicking on that slider button under our components. And we're just gonna go ahead and change that width to a percentage. Right now it's set to automatic, but we're gonna go ahead and change that to 20%. All that that's gonna do is just give that a slider a little bit of a longer or greater width that we can use to slide over and back. So here you can see we can adjust the dot size. Now, if we use a large dot here, what should happen is if I click on blue and I click anywhere on the cell, we should get a solid blue circle. And here you can see that when I click, I get a red circle on the opposite side of the screen of where I clicked and it's not filled in. So we have quite a few bugs here that we need to address. So now that we've switched over to our block view, we're ready to go ahead and start to look at the code and see how we can get it to function correctly. So some of the things that you're gonna notice is down here at the bottom, we have these warning signs. So these are our compilation errors. Those errors need to be fixed in order to get our code to work correctly. If we go ahead and click on the show warnings, you're gonna notice that it's telling us right here that we have an error with our call camera one to take a picture. And we also have another error here with our canvas one background image to get an image. Here we have that red X. Here we're using what we call a local variable. And that local variable needs to be assigned to some event handler in order to work. So my guess would be that those blocks probably have to be placed in some sort of event handler in order to get those error messages to go away but let's take a look at some of the easier code to fix. And that's gonna be our color buttons. So what you're gonna notice next to those colored buttons is that you have these question marks. And if we click on those question marks, what it's gonna do is pop up a little comment and it's gonna tell us what the event handler should really do. So here it's telling us that when the green button is clicked, we should set the color of the paint to green. Well, if we look at that event handler, what we're gonna notice is that when we click the green button, we're setting our canvas paint color to yellow. And that's why when we go ahead and try to draw on our canvas, when we click the green button, that we get the yellow color. So a quick fix to this is to just go ahead and click on that color palette and let's go ahead and change that to green. Now that we've changed that to green, again, when we click the green button and we draw our line, we should get green. So we have finished or fixed one of the minor bugs in the program but let's go ahead and look at the other color buttons as well. 
Here we have our yellow button, and if we click on that, it should change it to yellow. So again, go ahead and click on your color palette. We'll go ahead and change that to yellow and give that a test. Click on the yellow button on the app companion and draw a line. Next step is the blue. So when we go ahead and click on that question mark again here, it's going to tell us that when we hit the blue button, we should get the color palette to change to blue. So we're going to change that red, find a blue color that you like, click on the blue button on your app companion and test it out. Now we fixed three of our bugs and we have the correct colors working, but we still have no way of clearing the screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at this clear button. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on that comment because it's important to read those comments to see exactly what the app is telling us it should do. In this case, it should clear the canvas of any drawings. Well, here we have when the canvas clear button one is clicked, we're calling canvas one, which is our image here. That's our canvas that we can draw on. It's being called to clear, but it's not working the way it should. And the reason for this is because it's grayed out. If we right click on that image, one of the things we can do is enable a block. So again, if I enable this, now you get that solid color. If I click on the clear button, it should clear the screen. Again, if I try to draw on that and I go ahead and let's just say I right click and disable that block and hit clear, again, nothing's gonna happen. So we need to make sure that that clear canvas button is gonna be enabled. So right click, select enabled, go ahead and give it a try and it should clear your canvas. So now we fix our yellow, blue and green buttons as well as our clear button. The next step here is to go and identify some of those other features. So here you can see we have a camera when after the picture is taken, what should happen? And we also have our take picture button. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. When we go ahead and take a picture, this event handler is triggered when the take picture button is clicked. The program should take a picture using the camera component. So here we wanna be able to call our camera to take a picture. By doing that, it should go ahead and open up our camera and allow us to take that actual picture. Now, what happens to that picture after it's taken? Here, we need to go ahead and take a look at that when camera after picture is taken. And here, the event is triggered after the camera takes the picture. It is used to determine what to do with the picture that has been captured. So after we take that picture, what we're gonna wanna go ahead and do is set the canvas background image to get an image. That's that local variable that's going to store and save the image that was just taken. Now by dropping those two blocks into those event handlers, you're also gonna notice that our errors down at the bottom disappeared. So now what should happen is if we click that take picture button, we should be able to open the camera on our app companion or on our tablet and take a picture of whatever we would like and use that to go ahead and draw on our canvas. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Now, once you go ahead and click on that take picture button, it may ask you to go ahead and allow your camera access to your computer. So go ahead and hit allow, allow it to do that. And then your camera should pop up on your Chromebook. And if you have a tablet, obviously it'll use the camera on your tablet. Now, once that happens, you're going to see the screen and what you're going to need to do is go ahead and select or click on the dot to take your picture. Once it captures your picture, if you like the way the picture looks, you'll see a blue check mark and simply go ahead and click on that blue check mark. Now, once that picture is captured and you have clicked on that blue check mark, your image should appear on your actual canvas. If it doesn't, just go ahead and click that take picture again and it should replace the image. Now, since this is a canvas image, you can still draw or overlay anything on top of that. So again, if we go back and grab our colors, let's grab the green here, we should be able to kind of draw all over top. Now we do still have some problems here, obviously with the lines, no matter what we do, it's still not going the way we want it to. And if we click that clear button, we've now lost that cell organelle. If we want to go back to the original image, what we're going to need to do is we're going to go ahead and need to modify this clear button just a bit. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to our canvas one. And from our canvas one, we're going to want to go ahead and find the set background image. 
So we're gonna set our canvas one background image two, and we're gonna bring in a blank text box here. We can get that all the way from the top and we're gonna need to call that image by name. Now, how do you find the name of that image? We can go back to the designer view and under our media, you're gonna see that you have this AC16 animal cell PNG. This does need to be spelled exactly the way it is. So you may need to go ahead and just double click on that, make sure it's all highlighted. You can copy that and then go back into that text box and paste it in. Once you do that, we should be able to hit the clear button and it should set it back to its original image. Now that we have our camera and our color buttons and our clear button working, the next thing we need to look at are these last two event handlers. And that's what happens when the canvas one is touched or what happens when it's actually dragged. Now the canvas one touched is basically whenever we touch this, we want to be able to get a circle to be filled in and be able to basically go wherever we touch the actual screen. And that's not happening. Remember, if we select a color and we click, we should be able to get a solid blue circle and it should also be wherever we click or touch the screen. So if we take a look at this event handling, here we're basically pulling some variables. We're getting the center of our X and the center of our Y coordinates. And right now what it's doing is basically placing it on our Y and Y value. So that's why our circle is going off to the right because we're getting an incorrect variable here for our X. We wanna make sure that we get whatever the X value is. So go ahead and click on that drop down. We could change the X. And now what should happen is when we click on the screen, it should go directly where we click or select. It's still not filled in. And in order to get that filled in, we need to change that fill from false to a true statement. By doing that, wherever we click now, we should be able to get a solid circle. And again, you can change the size of the circle by adjusting the slider. So if we go all the way down, we can make it even smaller. And again, we should be able to click on different colors and add them throughout the screen. Clicking on the clear button should also clear our canvas. Now we're down to our last event handler, and that is our lines. So when we draw those lines, we want to be able to get the straight lines on the screen. So if we look at here, we're calling our canvas one to draw a line. And just like we did with our fill circle, what we're looking at is the beginning and ending of the line. So where we touch and drag to where does it end? So here we have an X and Y one value. And what we're getting here is we're getting our previous Y value for the X coordinate and we're getting our previous X coordinates for the Y value. So these two guys here are reversed. So we're going to need to drop our previous Y into our Y one and we're gonna to need to change that previous X to our X one. Here we have our current X and our current Y. So let's clear the screen and give it a shot. We grab that blue color and now we draw a line. You can see that it should follow wherever my cursor goes. Same thing if you are actually on a tablet. Wherever you drag your finger now, it should now work correctly. So now that you've gone ahead and debugged your program, we've gotten everything working correctly in the way that it should, you should be ready to move on to the next activity.